Give us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May our souls be rekindled with fire from above. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thine the glory. the glory. God, we ask you to revive us again. Father, we're so grateful. If we ever put a theme to a prayer, mine would be grateful. Oh, God, you've been so good to us. God, we are grateful for when we think about the way things could be and the way that they are, we can shout hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. For God, you have revived us again. How do I know that you woke us up this morning? You allowed us to be in your sanctuary one more time. Oh God, you didn't have to do it, but because you are kind and compassionate and loving and understanding and forgiving, you brought us back one more time for one reason and one reason only and to, that is to praise you to worship you to honor you to glorify you to give you all that you do and that's everything for you deserve it all oh god thank you thank you lord thank you for being with us standing by us taking up for us having mercy upon us thank you jesus Holy Spirit, Heavenly Dove, you're already here. We just ask you just to manifest yourself within us. Let that part of you come out to give you what you deserve. Let us worship you in spirit and in truth. And so in truth, sincere, not just words and hollering out and just doing stuff that we just do. Let it be sincere because of all that you've done for us, oh God. You brought us some of us up off of our sick beds. Thank you, God. You brought Connie up off her sick bed. Oh God, thank you. God, you answered my prayer because I asked you, don't take her voice. Don't take her ability to, uh, to uh, play the piano and look what we have. Thank you, Jesus. You brought my mother up. Thank you, oh God. My brothers, people in the church, in the sanctuary here, things we didn't even know people were going through. Oh God, you brought Bobby up and out. Patrick, Barry, oh God, thank you. We have miracles sitting among us right now. God, thank you. So why wouldn't I title this prayer gratefulness? Because God, we are grateful. So, Spirit of God, just stay with us. Stay with us, oh God, in this place. God, I pray that you touch the pastor in the name of Jesus, that every word that comes from out of his mouth would be of you. Every word that he speaks, you know we need to hear it. So give it to us, God, through your man of God. Father, have mercy in anything that would impede the Holy Spirit. Father, we ask you to cast it out right now with the authority of Jesus Christ. God, we love you today. We love you today. God, we just love you today. So, God, keep us until you come back for us, oh God. Give us health and give us strength. For we know our help comes from the Lord. He who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. Oh God, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. In Jesus' name, I ask all of these blessings. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Let the people of God say amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 5 through 10. Amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than is wanted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I will give a I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insult, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Let the church say amen. amen. This is God's word. Stand on God's word. Amen. 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 As we prepare ourselves for offering, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this moment where we can all participate, God. Lord God, we ask you to bless those that are coming forth, Lord, to give yes, their God. tithes and offering, God. Bless those that don't have the means, God. Bless them anyhow. Lord God, we ask you to use this for the uplifting of your kingdom. Yes, Lord. That someone may be blessed through our giving. Bring everything to the storehouse. In Jesus' name we pray. All things come of thee, O oh Lord. All things come of thee. Please be seated. Oh, yeah. I know the Lord. He is a wonder. Come on, son. In my soul. I know the Lord, yeah, he's a wonder in my soul, yeah, sing son, cause whatever I need, he will supply, oh yeah, whenever I call him, he's by my side. I know the Lord, oh, he's a wonder yes, in my soul. I don't think you hear me. I know the Lord, he's a wonder, wonder. in my soul. Yes, he is. I say. I know the Lord. 
Lord, you said, He's a wonder in my soul. Yeah. Whatever I need, He will supply. Whenever I call Him, oh yeah, He's right by my side. I know the Lord. Lord, He's a wonder, wonder in my soul. Well, He, he takes me over my mountain. My mountain. He takes me through. He takes me through. He takes me through. Here we are, Lord, needing to hear a word from you, Lord. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? We need you now, Lord. We, we need you now, Lord. Some of us are going through, Lord, and we can't even articulate all of it, but we know, Lord, that if we go through with you, we'll be okay. Lord, we need you now. Right now, Lord, we ask you to give us a word. Slow down tongues and open up hearts. Let the words of this mouth and the meditation of this heart be acceptable to thy sight, Lord. You are our strength and our redeemer. Gird us up, Lord. Quiet down the noise. Gird us up, Lord. Understand that you have the last word. Gird us up, Lord. No matter what the report, Lord, we know that you say amen. Gird us up, Lord. Be ever so careful to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. If there be a title, and you can Google it, but it's not really a word. If we know ology is a study of something, if there be a title, it would be Thorns Ology. Thorns Ology. The study of thorns. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, like, like, like we said before, God, we, we, we love you and we adore you. Like we said before, God, um, we don't understand why we go through. But like we said before, God, no matter what we go through, we'll still trust you. Don't we understand that? He never said there wouldn't be thorns in our lives. And, and, and we don't know why. We, I, I do know sometimes we cause our own thorns. Because we be seeking the wrong type of rose. Sometimes we cause our own thorns. Because we get caught up in other people's problems. Sometimes we have we have our own thorns. Yeah. But but what we forget sometimes while we're going through, if we believe that God knows us from before our mama kissed our daddy, if we believe that God has known us 
and knows every hair on our head. If we know, if we believe that God knows exactly how much we can bear, then we have to understand that God knows the thorns that we have. He knows where you got it. He knows what it looks like. He knows how big it is. He knows how much it hurts. He knows that you want to go through it. He knows your thorn. And I know we don't like to say it because we serve a God that can do anything. So why would he do it? We don't like to say it because God would never make me go through this. We don't like to say it because God will pull you out and place your feet on solid ground. All that is true. And he also knows your thorn. If you're not sure, let's go back. Let's do Old Testament. Remember, um, there's a guy who didn't really realize what was going on. His name was Job. And Job had a storm. And then Job had a thorn. See, see, Job had this storm, and he didn't even know that God said, uh, for those who don't know, maybe online, I know y'all know the the story. Uh, 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 God told the enemy or the devil, what about my servant, Job? Uh You do anything, but don't touch. Uh, Amen, I I heard it. Uh, uh, And so, all kinds of stuff. Job went through a storm. But sometimes what we miss is, after Job went through a storm, of all his kids died, all the stuff happened to him. When Job went through a storm, Uh all these things happened, seemed like right at once. When Job went through a a, a storm, Uh the storm left a thorn. God, not only did I go through it, after I went through it, I expected something to be different. After I went through that rough side, I expected something to change. I still stayed faithful to you, but nothing changed. I thought after peace got still, it should have gotten better. And I find myself with a faith crisis. Friends telling me that I shouldn't follow your wife is telling me stuff. God, how can I go through the storm and end up with a thorn? I, I, I just I just don't get it. I, I, and, and see, and Job got to the point where um, he talked about God so much that God said, where were you when? Because sometimes just because we go through storms, we don't think we would have a storm. Esther, Esther uh, um, didn't even realize that she was going through. People didn't know that she was uh, a good Jewish girl, that, that she was queen. She didn't realize that, that, that she might be found out. So when everything happened uh, uh, and there was going to be an edict against all the Jewish people and she might get caught up, the queen needed to talk to the king. We know, we know the story, amen. And so, and so there was a storm for her. She had to pray hard trying to figure out, will I approach the king? And, and, and then as she did... Everybody knew who she was. So the question is, how deep was her thorn? Hiding is over, Esther. We know who you are. Uh, um, So so what you going to do about that? The biggest thing is that they didn't find out who you are, and now they do. How will you move forward in your life after they know exactly who you are? Will you still live for him, or will you try to hide again? Will you still stand up for him, or will you try to go back in the shadows? What will you do, Esther? Now that the thing you were trying to hide is revealed. What's done in the dark, the skull, this comes out in the light. How do you handle your thorn? And I can't, you know, these two people got caught up in other people's problems, so I can't just leave it right there. So I got to give you somebody. I'll give you Jonas. Now we know, for those who know the word, that Jonas started Jonas' problem. Jonas didn't do everything Jonas was supposed to do. God said go north, he went south. God said do this, he did that. I know I got some Jonases in here, so I'm going to look to the right so you don't raise your hand. I know we got some Jonases in here. So when he found himself in a big fish, at the time on a boat with no kind of supply, that was me, my brother, I'm sorry. Uh, what was Jonah going to do in the middle of nowhere with a thorn? What is Jonah going to do in the middle of nowhere? He, he got a choice. He can still have some big fish time, or he can change and say, God, I'm going to do what you need me to do. Now we know Jonah got spit out. Amen. That's a good thing he got spit out. It's a good thing. But he still had um, throwing issues because Jonah still had a little bit. Uh, If y'all read the whole story, y'all know that Jonah still went there. But he was kind of, unlike some of us, Jonah still had issues. Even after he went through, he, he learned kind of a whole lesson, but he still had issues. And that brings us to today. Well, not today. I should go to Paul. It's a couple thousand years ago. But now we come to Paul. Good old letter writing. I'm trying to be everything Paul. 
what can we learn from Paul, Pastor? Because Paul yeah. was so long ago. Paul always wrote these nice letters to people, and Paul was always trying to do the right thing. Really? Uh, um, I, 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 don't, I don't like to judge people. In fact, God told me not to, so I'm not judging. I'm just giving my own personal opinion that, that we have to be very careful when we think we know everything right. and we think that God don't see stuff. Because the only person that really knows, the only person you can truly be honest with is yourself. That's right. See, 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 Paul understood that even though he was going to church, even though he was doing everything he was supposed to do, he still had mm, stuff with him. Well. I don't want to say issues because I saw you. He still had stuff that he was trying to work out. He was still having stuff that, that he was trying to figure out. We yeah, even saw in the yeah. first one of the Corinthians, Paul did this little bit of shape with Apollos. We said, well, Apollos can't be there right now, but I know he's supposed to be there right now. Paul had some... Issues. I'll try not to go there myself, but I had to say he had issues. He had issues. I like Paul. But, but see, here's the, here's the challenge we have uh, this morning when it comes to thornology. One is um, to understand that thorns are thorns, and they're going to be thorns, and thorns do what thorns do. Uh, the other thing is uh, your thorn is your thorn. So sometimes you try to explain your thorn to somebody, and they don't get it because your thorn wouldn't bother them. But your thorn was uniquely created to bother you. Your thorns were uniquely created to get your attention. Your, your thorns were uniquely, uniquely created for you to pay attention. Your thorn is uh, uniquely created for you to say, wait a minute. Am I doing everything I need to do? Because for some reason, I got this thorn. Yeah. And sometimes a thorn is for you to grow. Sometimes a thorn is supposed to be a stretch. Sometimes a thorn has you stop. Sometimes a thorn has you say, yay God, I need you now. Sometimes a thorn makes you say, uh-oh, what did I just do? But either way, it's your thorn. So, of course, the scripture, Paul knew exactly what his thorn is, because Paul at least had enough common sense to know, um, you know what? I've been kind of doing some stuff wrong, and I thought nobody saw, but I guess God saw. So, 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 so what do we do when we look around? What do we do when we're waiting for uh, our morning to come? What will we do in our midnight hour? What will we do when we realize that what we're going through is not a storm, but a thorn? I'll take two seconds to, to, to explain the difference here. A storm is something that will come and pass. A storm is something that God will say, peace, be still, because you don't need to go through this always. Just trouble shouldn't last all the time. A storm is something that's just for a season. Well. And a season is just long enough for you to recognize what it is, for you to be girded up, and for you to have power to get over it. Uh -huh. A thorn girds you up and gives you power. But you got power when to, in order to make the thorn go away. Yeah. Let, me, let me fix it a little yeah. bit. Um, see... Most of the time, our thorns is by thought or mind or soul. I'm not talking about sickness. I'm not talking about going to the doctor and trusting God. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about those personal things spiritually that you know you need to work out. Those, those spiritual things that you try to hide. Those spiritual things that you don't want nobody to know about. Those spiritual things that are holding you back from getting closer to God. Those things are your thorns. Well. And no one can keep that still but you and God. No one can pull it out but you and God. No one can, can make it go away but you and God. So that's why sometimes our thorns last years. Because there's something that you need to do to minimize the thorn. See, 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 storms, you, sometimes you have to do nothing. The disciples on the boat really didn't do anything. The, Jesus, um, the storm, and Jesus said, peace, be still. There's nothing they had to do. Jesus said, peace, be still. But Paul knows exactly what he needs to do. Since he came across this place and he got tired uh, uh, of this and he figured out, wait a minute, let me do some self-reflection. It's Lenten season. Let me go faster. I'm making that part up. Don't look at the Bible for Lenten season. Um, he, he, let, let, let me try to do something to figure out why am I going through this thing because it seems like I'm going around in circles, going to fly high like a bird up in the sky. I know that's secular. Let it go. Um, he was going around in circles and going around in circles trying to figure it out. And, and, and storms came and storms went, but he was still going around in a circle. He had some productivity, but things weren't perfect because he was still feeling it. He, had, he was going forward and going to the next level, but he was still feeling it. Yeah. Something was going on where I keep feeling this thorn, and I, I can't get rid of it. I tried to act like it wasn't there, but every time I'm not looking, I, I feel it, and I, I can't figure it out. But I'm going to figure it out, God, me and you, God, because I can't figure it out. But, but wait a minute, hold up, time out. The Holy Spirit showed it to me. I, I know exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. In Paul's case, it was boasting. I, I, know, I know what it is. In his case, it was, bo I, I, I know what it is. And, 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 and he's saying that now that I know me and I know God, 
I can no longer be in a, be a fool and act like I don't see it now that I see it. I'm going to look this way again because somebody has seen it and y'all act like y'all don't see it and you know what that thorn is. Now between you and him, pray about it tonight. That's your homework. He saw it. In fact, Paul was so uh, um, overwhelmed by it, he wrote it to the church of Corinth because he saw it. I got it, God. I, I got it. Now, now it's up to me to do something about it. I, I got it. It's up to me to do something about it. But the blessing is uh, most of the tools that God gives us uh, covers everything we need to do. So, 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 I see what it is. In my case, um, it's boasting. So, I won't be a fool to act like um, I didn't see it. In fact, I'm not just saying it's boasting because y'all do know usually it's a little bit of lie in all boasting. You know, you know. If you say you're all that, you know you're not all that, you're lying. Um, I'm just saying. So, Paul knew that he was boasting. He knew. So, he said, for now on, all right, for now on. Um, I understand that my boasting is getting me in trouble. In fact, my boasting actually made the thorn go a little bit deeper. So, so I know it's, it's, that's it because when I do do that thing and the Holy Spirit showed me that thing, every time I do that thing, even though I think it's getting better, it's getting worse, I think Paul's name is getting puffed up, but Paul's name is actually being run through the mud because I'm so busy lying, I don't see the effects of what I'm doing. So he was starting to see the effects of what he was doing. In fact, watch this. Here's the hard part um, that we might not want to admit. Um, when we do this thing, sometimes the thing we do with the thorn not only make the thorn go deeper, mm -hmm. but make the thorn wider. Mm -hmm. You ever have something stuck in you, like a little thing, and, 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 and moving it hurts, but you know it would have been worse if it was wider? Yeah. Yeah. See, see he, he understood that not only was the thorn um, revealing the fact that he was not being truthful, he also realized that internally he was becoming conceited. Because it was all about me and not about God. It's all about what I can do and not what God can do. So he also knows that the thorn not only hurts, it sometimes blinds you. Because now you can't see anything else but the thorn. And how can you concentrate on this if you're in the middle of studying your thorn? How can you concentrate on that if you're in the middle of looking at your thorn? I'm so busy trying to evaluate, turn my thorn over, and put it under a microscope that I lose track of everything else I'm trying to do. The thorn distracts. You have to work on your thorn. So, so God tells him this. Okay. Paul, I know the thorn hurts. In fact, Paul, <laughs> uh, uh, bless you, I know that pulling out the thorn may hurt worse than leaving the thorn in. Mm -hmm. You get so used to the thorn that you believe you can live with it. Mm -hmm. But Paul, I didn't mean for you to live with the thorn. I meant to you for you to learn from the thorn. So, so see, see, see here, here, here's the key. There, there are three reasons why, why God refused to remove the thorn. Paul had to work out his stuff. Paul, if I remove the thorn for you right now, you'll never work out your stuff. Uh, that's why we say you come, you, know, you come to the altar and leave your burdens here. He don't want you to have the burdens, but he does want you to work out your problems. God will not bless your mess. He'll bless you in your mess, but he won't bless your mess. So, 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 so when you come, and, and, and Paul, you're honest, Paul, and, and you see the thorn, and, and you know about the thorn, Paul, d d don't worry, Paul, because you also know, if you're praying to me, that I am with you always to the end of time. And I'm with you with the, storm in, with the thorn in you. I'm with you when the thorn's not in you. I will always be with you because, what do you say? My grace is sufficient. Well, well, God, I love you. I know your mercies are new every morning, and I know you forgive stuff through grace, but I'm kind of tired of the thorn right now. This is a long thorn, God, and I'm tired of it. This is a wide thorn, God, and I can't. This is a, th God, this thorn ain't, ain't working for me right now. And, 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 and baby, I'm going to help you with your thorn, but it's not thorn time yet. I'm, I'm going to help you with your thorn. But see, you need to marinate some more on why the thorn is there. I will help you with the thorn. Because some of us think realization gives you expectation that God will move right away. Realization is the first step. Your expectation to change what you've been doing in order for the thorn to come out. So, so God is saying, Paul, okay, okay. I, I'm so glad you understand what's going on in your life. I'm so glad you got it. But you have to understand and I know every hair on your head. And until I know that you're about to grow from this thorn, you got to understand that my grace is sufficient. 
Hold in there, Paul. I know some work you got to do. Hold in there. I know you want to be fixed right away, but I'll show you the steps you have to do to get back to a non-thorn state. Hold in there, Paul, because while you're working it through, while you're in the market, I will pour you out, and you'll have my grace every step you take because my grace is sufficient. And if I pull it out of you, Paul, you won't move. If I pull it out of you, Paul, you'll get right. You know what? Let me, let me, so, so y'all, y'all probably agree with me this. Some people have thorns put out. When you turn your head, they put the thorn right back in. <laughs> no, you didn't just go back to his grace is sufficient. He will help you to get to the spot where not only is the thorn a pain, but the thorn becomes a foreign substance in your body. Don't you know your body would never like to keep foreign substances in it? It always try to come through your pool, pour it out. Yeah. Foreign substance. So, so, so it's natural and spiritually natural that a foreign substance will come out until you invite it in. Some people have kept their thorns because um, they're too weak to pull it out. And, and God's trying to tell you, now, think about it now. If I let the thorn go in, I'll give you a way to get it out. If I let the thorn go in, I'll give you the way to grow from it. If I let the thorn go in, there will be a change in your life. If I let the thorn go in, this, this is not the end. I say the amen. Well, amen. So, so it's good to study while the thorn is there. It's also good to study how to get it out. So, 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 so God's telling Paul, okay, okay Paul, here it is. Here, here's the key. All right. You know like I know my grace is sufficient. What you're failing to realize, and, and why I think you're losing your trust in me, why, why I believe that, that, that you don't remember, and it's hard for you to sing what the men say, where I know the Lord is a wonder for my soul, is this. Um, from the beginning, Paul, yeah, I love you, you love me. From the beginning, I'll keep my covenant. From the, live, from the beginning, I'll answer every prayer that you pray. Um, for from the beginning, you got to realize when you come to this place, that thorn was really never about you as a physical person. Mm. The thorn was al- always a spiritual growth thing. Mm. And until you're able to spiritually grow and learn the spiritual growth lesson from the thorn, mm. the thorn will continue to teach. Yeah. 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 I know you don't like the lesson. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know the lesson's hard. I know. But the thorn yeah. is teaching you. Yeah. The thorn is helping you. But, 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 but God, the thorn is hurting. I, I, I know, but sometimes, I'm not going to do that no pain, no gain thing. That's a workout thing. Sometimes you have to understand that in order to grow, you have to go through. Oh, he'll lift you over. Oh, he'll carry you and set your feet on solid ground. Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll get you to the top of the mountain, but he'll also help you on the rough side of the mountain. Yes. I, I, I know you want to sing the song, oh, God, please remove this thorn. Take it away so I can live holy. Take it away so I can live righteous. I know it's a song that we love. We all like to sing. But God says, will you praise me with the thorn still inside? Will you trust me with the thorn still inside? Will you uh, uh, exalt me and praise me and, and magnify my name while you still have the thorn? And then right at the end, he, he, he gives us a little tidbit to help us. See, He said, see. You don't understand. The reason why you should understand that you can handle thorns, the reason why we even study thorns, because my son taught you a lesson. It's a reason why they put a crown of thorns on his head. There's a reason why they stuck them in the side, because you have to understand they did that physically so you can handle some stuff spiritually. Uh, They did that physically so you can understand this stuff spiritually. Because many years from my son dying, uh, Paul, I have to help you to understand that um, when the world says you're weak, it's all right. That's why we had to be attitudes. When the world says you don't have it, it's all right. Just trust me. When the world says you can't be lifted up, you'll be no good, you're just like a, it's all right because I know exactly who you are. Because I got this little thing about my nature. Not only will I not leave you nor forsake you, I'm even better than an energizer bunny. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, w- when a thorn is in and you get weak, when a thorn is in, Job, and they talk about you, when a thorn is in, yeah. Jonas, and you have hardships, yeah. when a thorn is in, uh, Esther, you think you're about to be persecuted, mm. when a thorn is in, insert your name here, and you have difficulties, mm. don't ever worry about it because I am still God. Yeah. 
I will be strong whenever you're weak. I will be strong when you need me. I'll be right there just call on me. I will prop you up on your weak side. How can I promise all that? I can promise that because in your weakness, I am strong. But there's nothing, there's nothing about being physically strong. It's about spiritually strong. So I know it's nice to say thorn out, you're studying thorns. I know that there's a, there's, there's a thorn on every rose bush, but understand that God is always there with us. He will never leave us, leave us or forsake us. And we think we had the thorn too long. His grace is sufficient. When we haven't learned our lesson, his grace is sufficient. He will always be there for you on his time because his grace is sufficient. So when you have a thorn, and you start to look at it. When you have to thorn, and you have to start to study, you're trying to figure out why God, how God, what should I do, God? When you have a thorn, trust him. Know he's always there. Trust him. Know that he'll pick you up. Trust him. Know that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Trust him. Because he has plans for you, says my God. Plans for your prosper, plans for hope, and plans for a future. Even when you have storms, when the time is right and you are ready, when the time is right and you have grown in him, when the time is right and you understand and articulate what, what God is to you and how God moves your life, he will remove that thorn. So this morning as we go through um, this day and this hour and this moment, don't worry about your infirmities. God knows you have them. Don't worry about when you're weak. God knows where you are. He is always there for you. Don't worry about anything. Because God is there for you. He will lift you. He will carry you. He will place your feet on solid ground. And the most important thing, like he told Paul, I will clear your mind of your weakness. So you can see exactly what it is. When it's time to go for it, call on me. And I will be there to guide you. Because that's the kind of God we serve. Let us pray. Dear precious Father, we thank you, Lord, for our thorns. We thank you, Lord, for the clarity and understanding. Help us, Lord, this day. That whenever we go through something, know that you are with us. Whenever we go through something, Lord, we feel weak, you will make us strong. Whenever we go yes. through something, Lord, lead us and guide us along the way in your will. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say, amen. amen. Let us stand all over the church. If there's someone this morning and you've been going through, and you know that God can do anything but fail, and you had that inkling, but you've never said yes to him. You had that thought, but you never said, God, um, I believe in your son. I believe your son died and rose for me. If you want to give yourself to him this morning, now's the time. I, I know the storms are rough. I know the way is rough. I know sometimes you feel like you have storms, but God will keep you through it all. Is there one this morning who want to give their life to Christ? The doors are open. Uh, now's the time. If you're online, um, there's, a, there's a prayer um, link on the website. Just, just hit it, and we will pray with you. The altar is open if you want to give yourself to him. I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word. Come yeah. on, son. I've seen too many victories yeah. to let defeat have the last word I tell you that I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word I tell you that I've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word hear this when I wake up in the morning and I realize that I'm still here that lets me know that God gave me favor, no matter what circumstances reveal. So. He brought me through my pain and sorrow, reassuring me I got hope for tomorrow. Defeat can't compete with mercy and grace. If I just keep the faith, I can win this race. I see. the last word oh i've seen too many victories i can't let the feet have the last word mm. when i think of his goodness and all he's done for me i dare not complain because mm. he brought me over the rugged hill all oh, makes and pain well i understand Trials come to make me strong. I got 
in the ratio. Gotta, Gotta keep, keep on pressing on. On, 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 on. This is my testimony yeah. to you. I've got victory even though I don't look like what I've been through. I see too many victories. Defeat and the last word. When I wake up in the morning, I got a victory. I get out my bed, y'all. I got a victory. I, I put one foot before the other. I got a victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got a victory. Oh, I counted victory. Yes, I do. I got a victory. Said I counted victory. Yes, I do. I got a victory. My peace of mind, yeah. I got a victory. forevermore and the people of God sing together. Have a glorious day and week in the Lord. 